All right, we're live. Welcome, folks, to the Cucumber New Contributors Ensemble. I am Matt Wynn here in Nelson, BC, in Canada. And I'm joined by Blaise Pavon in Franklin, Massachusetts, this week. So why are we here, Blaise? What are we doing? Well, um, in 2017, GitHub uh, surveyed over 10,000 open source contributors, and just over 3% of them were women. So we believe that open source communities will be more vibrant, resilient, and effective if they include everyone. So we hold this space uh, each week for anyone who is new to open source. And um, did I just lose my, <laughs> where's my tab? Uh, do, 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 do. I managed to accidentally close my, there we go. So anyway, we hold, <laughs> uh, especially for people who are from groups who've traditionally, historically been underrepresented in open source communities. Our goal is to provide a fun and welcoming environment where everyone can learn to contribute to open source. We use an ensemble programming uh, format and we follow these principles, uh, safety over comfort, uh, exploration and learning over perfection, and equity over efficiency. So we're here to give space to people who've traditionally been excluded from open source, even if that means going a little slower sometimes. So if you'd like to join us, you'd be very welcome. And you can reach us at, uh, at CucumberBDD on Twitter. Or control pl for and or, or control plane. Control plane, sure. Uh, Matt Wynn on Twitter as well. That's another way to find us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, thanks, Blaze. Yeah. So uh, we were just talking about what where else we've been doing open source wise this week. I've been working on. Um, oh man, what a yak shave! So we're we're splitting cucumbers. Had a lot of its core components in a mono repo, and we have decided we don't like the mono repo, and we are breaking it apart. So. I've been migrating a project called Cucumber Messages, which is the um, oh. DTOs for the message protocol that we emit from Cucumbers that are running um, about what's happening so that you can build reporting tools and stuff. And then splitting that into its own project. And part of the pain with the monorepo is that we have this very complicated um, make file process for doing the the building and releasing uh, so yeah. when we take these projects out of the main repo we have to put them into we have to rebuild the the the, the testing and, and building and and releasing scripts um and and we're using github actions for that right. um and one of the things we've got is we've got some tooling we've built which works with the change log so sort of for the release automation it can mm. like parse the change log and um add the version number when you do a release and stuff. Um, but we, so we've got the Go tool that we inherited from somebody um, which we found on the internet, which does most of the stuff we want to do, but we're discovering as we use it in real change logs that it's a bit buggy and it's mangling the change log sometimes. So uh, yesterday right. I added support for indented bullets in a change log into the into the change log tool it's really fun because like i've not really written much go and this thing is really nicely structured it's quite simple um and good tests so it's like really easy to sort of write a new test for what i want it to do and then fiddle about in the go fumble about in the go until i could make it do it it's kind of fun well that's so cool that's so cool i've been doing um a devops uh um Twitch stream in Spanish. So I'm basically going, going through the setup of my own projects, mostly, and uh, explaining kind of what I'm doing as I go along. And uh, it's a, it's difficult. It's awkward. It takes some getting used to, you know, making mistakes and you're live and you just have to kind of keep going with it. And, you know, thankfully, I, I don't think any, I mean, one or two people have dialed in. It's been not for well attended. So. Oh, is it you say and you're thankful for that? And I'm thankful for that. Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness there was the streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so um turning to what we tend to do this uh together, 
we've been working on this project for the inactive contributor bot and we're quite close i think maybe yep. we can bring the miro board up on the stream yep. so what we've done is drawn ourselves this yak map of all the yaks we need to shave to get to the goal of um making users become inactive after a year so we have this uh, for context we are working on a github action that will move cucumber contributors who have become inactive they haven't contributed for a year into a different team with less privileges so we still keep them in the organization so they still get the little badge on their github profile but um we take away their commit rights to the to the main um, branch and stuff just for security reasons really um and we built the thing the basic logic of the thing using stubs because this thing's got to talk to github a lot um, and now what we've been doing is gradually implementing the real interaction with github um, and the last one we've got to do is implement remove user from team and then we're going to be um stepping up a level in the yak map and kind of thinking about how do we actually integrate this and and really test it out so yeah i think that's what we need to get to next isn't it is to remove you yeah. from the team yeah um shall i put that on the mob timer yeah that sounds great uh, uh, a good day would be where do i edit the goals where's the goals a good day would be implement test for remove user from team uh, and then make it pass and then I guess work out what to do next if we get time yep reckon Okay, are we gonna stick to swapping on task, or do you want to try and do a timer since there's just two of us? What do you think? Uh, we can swap on tasks, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, would you like to start driving? Yeah, Could sure. That sounds task? great. All right. Yeah. Are you into the the VS Code Live share yet? I think so. Uh, I'm so in the. Uh. Oh. So it looks like it launched the browser. Well, maybe maybe it's the same thing. Let's see. It shows you. It's not. It's not showing. Uh... Okay. Let me see if I can do it from the. Um... Can I do it right from? Let's see. VS Code Live Share. Can I do it right from within VS Code? Live Share. Oh, here we go. Live Share. There we go. Uh, yeah, you can paste in that URL. Yeah. It should be signing me in, I hope. Oh, no. Uh, I just realized I wiped my whole... Oh. Okay, well, while you do that, this should sign me in. I'm surprised it's taking so long, actually. Yeah, 
ahead in 19, but I think I'm thinking of Go. Are you in? You're still not in, Blaze. I'm still not in, huh? That is, uh, hmm. I wonder if I should, uh, let's see. What if I, uh, Okay, I'm going to quit Chrome. That might help. And um, still not in, huh? Not yet. Do you want me to share my screen so you can see see you what I see? Well, it says it's signing me in, but it's also like not doing anything. I wonder if it's waiting for something, waiting for me to do something. Or is there me? Do I need to, is there some kind of a prompt? Uh, so I've got the link again. I'm just going to paste it into the chat window again. Yeah, I think... Um, I mean, it didn't say that I had a bad link. Do you want to maybe share your screen and we can yeah, let me do that. Sure. Together, we can do a little troubleshooting here. Um, yeah, I'm Uh, this will stop by the screen here. Okay, yes, continue. And then uh, share that, yes. And then uh, this is basically, I'm in here. I copy, I pasted that link. I can hit cancel. So it says signing in. So I, I can cancel that. The operation was canceled. But let me try this one more time. You did say Google was slow, didn't you? So maybe there's just a yeah. It might just be the, uh, yeah, that's true. It might just be a. Uh... Okay, I just hit enter. Nothing happened. Uh, this would be the place to put it, right? I can also. Um... Yeah, so what happens? You pressed enter. Yeah. Nothing happening at all right now, is there? It still feels like it's no. doing something. You go to the live share plugin on the left. No, the plugin on on the toolbar on the left hand side. Yeah, left on the left. It's like this the is... second one up. There's oh, I see. Uh, and then the, there was an arrow. There's like a round arrow with a circle this underneath thing. it. That one. Yeah. Oh my God! There we go. Me. Join, okay. okay. Oh, I see. Hang okay, on, that's my problem. That. I need to sign in here. So you okay, get up. Account. Okay, allow. I wonder if it's because you hadn't done this. That could very well be. Oh, uh, and then let's see here. Uh, Although I think people have got in as anonymous users as well, so. Oh, this is the wrong, it's using the wrong GitHub account. Let me, hang on a second. Uh, let me hit cancel. And, uh, okay, hang on a second. Let me, um, I need to, let me do something different right here. Let me go into GitHub as somebody else. Uh, uh, GitHub. Yeah, because I, I have a control plane GitHub ID also, um, but that's not the that's not who I am today. 
sign out, sign in. Uh, the navigation goes. Do I have it? Let's see here. Mm. So while it's while I see signing into GitHub.com on your live share or on your VS Code window you're doing something in a browser elsewhere are you yes i'm i'm basically um here we go i'm just that's looking, okay. looking away right now while you do this oh no that's okay oh yes it's uh so uh let's see so um I'm uh, logged in there and I need to uh, now go over here. The whole build cycle is working nicely. There's some differences in the JavaScript that's been built. What can I do? This is because I'm more modern and modular. It should be logging me in now. Um, I think I'm in, right? No? Nope. No. Okay, let me let's do this. Let's uh, having trouble logging in. Try a different way. GitHub Authentic. Sure. Let's see. You could try the anonymous one. Oh, I did this. Okay, so hang on. You can now sign in. Close close this page. Okay, great. So that means presumably this should be it. Ooh. I should be in now, right? Not yet. I don't see you yet. Really? Try that join one more time. Oh, recent contacts, Matt Wynn. That's a good sign. Yeah. Right, this looks good. Screen's gone blank. Live share workspace. Oh, come on, computers. Yes, do you trust the authors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Yay. Yay. Much better. Yes, great. Oh, that's great. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. To the point where we can work together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, um, yeah, you probably don't need to share your screen anymore. You've you've stopped. Yep. Um, do you want to see if you can run the tests? Can you do npm yes. test? Yeah. So how does the output look? Uh, output looks. Sometimes oh. wraps funny, doesn't it? Oh, it wraps funny, yeah. It's probably like 80 characters per line or something strange like that. Okay, so, but it's running uh, eight, eight passing. Okay. Uh, two scenarios passed. View, view crew from a report. That's great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Right. So let's go. 
Um, I think we said you were going to drive, right? Yeah, yeah. So what do you want? Let's go to the OctoKit GitHub test. And... Um, I'd say around line 25, let's add another context called removing someone from a team. This is going to be a lot like the one on number eight. Um. Okay, and then do you see what you have to do? If you look at the, that's it. So the second argument is a function. say it removes an existing member from a team Do we want to do the same? I guess oh, we yeah. We probably don't need the underlying OctoKit library. So we could probably borrow the, the one from line 34, where we just get the GitHub client. Yep. And then, so we need to, we're going to need that team slug like we have on line 12. Okay. But let's call it something different because it's not going to be the alumni team. It's going to be the contributors team. So let's call it like test contributors. And I guess we need to make sure that you are in the team. So we probably want to call line 20. This is a bit, it's a bit like, uh, chicken and eggy isn't it this but if mm. we call add user to team like line 21 then yeah, we okay. know that, that that user is in that team mm -hmm. and we could even just validate that that's worked by doing the, like what's on line 13 and just asserting that Initial members is equal to. Um, so, like with a real uh, assert, like. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So we could just just grab grab that list of of initial members. So paste that line in. And then we could do assert that. Uh, initial can you see how we do it on line 23 so instead of members you're going to pass it initial members oh i see All right but you actually want the same logic right you want to say has item blaze piece you want to check that that mm. the get the, the add user to team worked um, so this is all like our arrange bit of the test and then the act mm. bit is going to be where we go um await github client dot remove user from teams uh okay oh wait i'll get um like you could add a comment here that was like oh i see arrange act okay okay and all of this was the arrange or, or you know, given. Right. When, then, and this bit is where we're going to do the actual thing. So I, I we want to await GitHub client dot remove member from team. Can you 
change the name if you get if you just delete the whole method call name you should be able to do a dot and it'll give you a clue oh okay We've got a duplication of Blaze P. We should maybe extract that in a minute, but let's come back to it. Let's get it. Let's get it working. Um, remove user from team, and then we want to do uh, our then, which is going to be another call to get members of. So you could you could copy and paste line twenty two and twenty three down here. Right. So grab the members, and then but we want to say assert that members not has item Blaze P because Blaze should have gone from the first now. So wrap the call to has item in a call to not. That's how um, how everything works in Hamjess. Everything, everything's a function. And you can just... Uh, Wait, not... Qu has... Quick fix on the not, and it will add it to the imports from... Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Um... That's it. Wow. All right, so I reckon that test should fail in an in a like expected way, like in a, in a straightforward way, because I think everything else is in place. Oh, we haven't got a team called test contributors in GitHub, so I'm going to just go and manually create that now. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that's why it'll fail for the first time. Actually, why don't you do it? Because um, oh sure, you'll have a sure. bit, you'll have a better understanding about it if yeah you do it rather than me just doing it for us. Um, okay, let's go over here it's to. Uh, so I guess it's not found. It's difficult to tell from this call stack. But I do I do it in the Do I do it in the action retire? <laughs> it's a good so, thing I'm doing. So can you share your screen? Yeah, of course. Hang on. So do you remember we've got this test? Um, we've got this test right. org. So there's a there's an org. It's, it's oh, that's equivalent right. to cucumber. So you need to change that bit of your URL, and it's right. test hyphen inactive contributor action. There we go. Yeah. So in here, we need a new team now. Oh, a uh, new team. So over here. And this is the one I want to call test contributors. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what we were calling? We don't need anything else fancy about test. it. Uh, test alumni. Test alumni was for the other, the other. Test. Okay. Oh, and then test contributors. Oh, I see. It's it, so we should spell it like. It's probably case sensitive. It could be. It's probably worth getting it right. Uh, do I need a parent team? No. no. Uh, and it's visible, yes. Right, so you're in it by default. Um, no. Do I need to add? Oh, no, I don't want to add anyone, right? Well, let's see here. Because um, we start off clearing it out. We start off clearing out the other one. We haven't actually cleared this one out. Ah, that uh, one. Just I know we got, start we're... removing you. So we make sure. No, we make sure you're in it. Right. Um. And then we try to remove me. Yeah. Because that's what we're trying to prove works. So I don't know. Let's try running the test. You know, there's um there's an easy way to just run this one test. Um. If you put in. Um, if we put in a tag like into the oh. 
come through test. Oh, you, no, actually, the easiest way to do it is if you do it dot only like that. Oh. And then and the command line run. Um, uh, oh, but this is this is adding a new member to the team. We want to remove one, right? Oh, sorry, I picked the wrong one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Although we could test both of these just in case we jiggle around with the code. Sure. We run both of them. But um, sure. Yeah, let's let's just stick to this one for now. So it only put it on there, and then okay. run. Um, if you run npm run test colon unit. Oh, see there. that was fast. Hang on. Function not implemented. All right. And we've got a stack trace. So we can follow that stack trace to line 37. Oh, in the, uh, I see. Okay. So I guess, should we, should we uh, high five and swap until I try and make it pass? Yeah, yeah. High five and swap. That sounds great. So I'm going to go to the... Other I'll stop sharing. And I'm going to remove, I'm going to nick this code from line 15. And then paste it in. And I'm not sure what we need to do to it. So it's going to have to be, I need to make the function async. I need to say zip.optikit. I need to say org is zip.org. Um, team slug is common to the team, and username is user. Oh, and it's just reformatted that for me. So now I think I don't need this to be. All right, I think it might work. Want to run the test on me? Does it work over and over again? Just just run it a couple of times. Yeah, that's great. Because <laughs> I wonder anything about leaky sure. state or. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Wow, that's gratifying. Good old TDD. Good old, yeah, exactly. So, uh, is there anything left to do? I. Well, we should run all the tests, right? Let's yes. take out the only Four and run everything. Point blames. Take out the only. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, oh. Sorry, I oh, should. T came a little bit late. And this is actually running the real test, not the fake. Or are we still using mocks? So there's two different things that are happening. We are running the cucumber test of the core logic that decides whether whether or not any individual should remain in the committers team or not and calls the GitHub client to move them from team to team if if they should be moved. We're using Cucumber to test that core logic with fakes. But then we are using um, an interface, a TypeScript interface, to give us some guarantee that the fake GitHub adapter will oh. work the same way as the OctaKit GitHub adapter. And then we're unit testing or integration testing the, the OctoKit GitHub adapter on its right. on its own right right okay so we're Got it. trusting that these yes. tests that describe how the octokit github adapter work are consistent with our expectations and and the actual behavior of the fake now there is a really cool thing that you can do in this context which is to write what's called a contract test where you write a set of tests 
that specify how you expect a GitHub client to, to behave. So not just using this, the interface to define like what the types are at the, at the methods, but also how they behave when you do things to them. And you can write that contract test at a level of abstraction that lets you run the same test on the fake and on the, the real world um, adapter. Right. So that you get that like kind of cast iron guarantee that mm. the two things are behaving the same way. And I've been wondering about when was the right time to do that. And, and I thought we should wait until we were kind of like finished and then we could try and recycle, refactor the tests that we've got into that shape if we if we choose to. But we also could like ignore this for a bit mm -hmm. um, and like, put it on the shelf as a refactoring. But we could work towards making it work for real. So the place where we haven't done the work yet is if you go to, um, and I don't want to move on too fast because we should pat ourselves on the back for where we've got to. But if you yeah. look at the index TS file, if you come over here to where I yeah, am. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Um, we have uh, done a sort of sketchy implementation of a, of a run function which is going mm. to try and load a GitHub token. Great. Create an OctaKit client. But look, it's hard coded the uh, name of the org. Right. Sketchy. Right. And uh, and then it calls the retire function. But the retire function has got hard coded what the names of the alumni team and oh, the bits team are. Right. That's sketchy. Um, as yeah. It's also got uh, a hard coded. Um, assertion about how what the what the time frame is so we're we're assuming that we always want to time out after a year and we've got no okay. lever to pull to adjust that so that might be something you could you could make a parameter right right um, right and inject in but certainly i think we would quite quickly want to be able to configure the alumni team and the committers team mm -hmm. but definitely we need to be able to configure the org right okay or, uh, maybe we can pick up the name of the org from the environment that we're running in. Maybe there's a way to ask GitHub Actions, what is the name of the org I'm in, and then just mm. just work with that. Um, but anyway, we, we need to change it from being hard-coded like this. But that's probably all we've got to do, and then we can, we can actually try running it for real. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually, the, I guess the next refactor would be to, to wrap it as a GitHub app so that it can be invoked by other people yeah well potentially but they could use it as an action so publishing it as an action oh, is, I see. Is, like sure. a, is a fine way to do this yes that's um, right right and, and they have like their own authentication. sorry in other words they have it, it they, they run it as their as their user themselves they basically yeah, use they this would system. install it in a repo right. in their org and it would run right. periodically and, and do the thing right that's actually better in for for some cases because they might want to modify it presumably yeah. the other thing is do you remember we started out using it as a developing it as a as a bot, as a bot. Um, and there was a problem around that because bots are designed to react to events and actually this thing right. probably doesn't need to run on an, on an event it needs to run on a schedule so there kind of wasn't a natural right. way to do that within a right. github app and i think what we've done by making it an action is is probably simpler for now mm -hmm. because the yeah. core of it is still going to be the same whether it runs as a bot or an action but the bot is going to be a bit more there's another another issue with with bots or apps that like somebody has to maintain it as a production service oh it has to run somewhere and right you know, right if it breaks uh, then you have to fix it or right people can't rely on it whereas if it's an action like you just pull it into your ci pipeline and you see it run and maybe it passes maybe it fails but you it's self-service yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. kind of yeah like the, the runtime environment is your own ci system mm -hmm. so right Right, yeah, right. That way it's simpler for us to let people use it without having to take too much responsibility for that. Anyway, we should do a commit. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Um, shall I share my screen so that you can see me committing? Yeah, yeah.
get here. And I'll show that we have that in the game. And what do we do? We implement. How does it do yep. it? Implement. Remove users from more from team. We did say there was a little bit of refactoring to do, I think. Yeah. Do you want to put that in the commit message? Um, well, no. I just thought maybe that could be the next thing we do. Yeah, where, yeah for sure. Where's yeah. the mob timer window? Oh. Uh, Is there a stick? I think I might have closed it down now. Oh, because we weren't going to do We were just switching back and forth before. Yeah, but I put the goals in the mob timer. So oh, no. implement yeah. test for remove user from team. Done. Make it pass. Done. Work out what to do next. That's where we are. Yep. That's where we are. You know what we could do? It's going to be tricky. I was just, just thinking about trying to do a manual test and that we could actually just do it with the hard coded org name for now. Um, as long as the hard coded org name was the name of a real org that we. Um, well, do you want to do the test? Oh, you have. Uh, I mean, the org name. Do you want to use the test org? Well, that's what I was thinking. We could hard code it in there. But, you know, it's going to be really difficult to test it if we can't um, parameterize the, the duration of, the, of what counts as inactive. Because otherwise we'll have to wait right. for a year. Right, before, right, right, right. right. It okay. Kicks in. So, well, let's, let's put that in then and we'll pass it in as a variable, right? Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we, should we spend the time figuring out, should, well, I don't know. What other to-dos have we got left? What other to-dos have we got left? Let's have a look. There's one left in this to-do. Oh, this is in the JavaScript. That's interesting. So let's look in source. Hmm. So everything's in JavaScript. All the to-dos left in the JavaScript. That just seems like it needs to recompile oh oh we haven't done a build don't we need to do a npm build yeah. yeah this is just old or maybe this is an old file where is it because look it's got a lowercase h oh that's true what branch are we in <laughs> i just wonder if i just need to clean out what if i just rmrf this and then npm build okay. npm run build mm. that's gone from there Ooh, we've got a load of yeah we've got a load of files that are getting deleted from this folder old files mm. i guess okay have we got new stuff Uh, I don't know. I can't tell from here. Seems to have. Yeah, if you look in the diff folder. So I guess I better. Oh, I see. That. Right. Um, clean out old JavaScript. And then let me close this commit. So it'd be nice if it was doing that regularly, wouldn't it? What do we need to do to get it to do that? Uh, you want to do a pre do you, do you, do you ever use like pre-commit helps? Do you know about pre-commit? Well, yeah, I do. I'm just thinking. You see, we've got npm build. Yeah. Which runs every test cycle. Because when we do tests, we do npm run lint and npm run build and npm run test unit and npm run test exception and npm build production. That's all great, but we don't do npm build clean. So we oh. do, do that. Okay, yeah. Build clean. Just there. 
Oh, do you want to do it there? Oh, yeah, oh, I see. Okay, Just sure. Before we build production. Right, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So we're going to lint the code. Then we're going to check it compiles. If it compiles, we'll run the unit test. If the unit test will pass, we'll run the acceptance test pass. So we'll run the acceptance test. And if the uh, acceptance test pass, then we'll clean up the build folder and build the production JavaScript. Now, do you do you, do you want to put that at the default test? Yeah, I just did. I added it to the the te okay. test thingy, so I'm just trying trying it out now. So just remove. It, you'd rather um, my and my question is, I guess, would you rather do that than say like have a new target like like test colon whatever deploy or something like that? Uh, my my thinking is, if it's on the standard test one that you run, you'll never forget to run it. That's true. Yes. <laughs> so it just happen every time. Yes. Uh, yes. So you yes. Think about it. Yeah. 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 Um, sure. But it does seem to have made another commit, which is interesting. What was the difference? Git log? Oh, git. Okay. Oh, it's added them into a folder called production. That's weird. Something fun going on here. So, can you see? I can see the file, folder. but it's made a folder. Or maybe, yeah, it's it's put them in yeah, the slash production. Is that where we're expecting it to be? Uh, I thought it was yeah. going to be in. Wait. Yeah, we are expecting it to be in the production folder. So maybe the oh, issue I see. This is that we have been committing like the dev files. Yes. Which we didn't really want to be. Okay. So let's just commit that. So only, actually we could also get ignore anything else, I guess, couldn't we? Yeah, yeah we could, like, uh, like this dev. So if I run npm run build, I think we can mm -hmm. see another folder of stuff appearing in disk. Yeah, so disk has now got dev and production. Yes, what I do see. Is ignore disk slash dev, isn't it? Yeah. So let's add that to. There we go. That's grayed out now. Right. So now we can commit. Oh, I see. What? In file in production JavaScript. It's weird that it showed it up as renamed. Just uh, yeah, because it's the same file, I suppose. Just oh, location. Okay. So okay. As far as Git's concerned. Hmm. And ideally, I suppose we wouldn't be building the the steps for production, but. You know the feature files. Right. I don't know if I'm bothered enough to try and fix that. I should be excluding it. I don't know why it's not. Yeah, ex excluded features. Yeah, I don't know why it's not, but it isn't. I, mm. I get pretty annoyed having to fiddle around with the TF config settings. It's kind of a bit of a bane. Too configurable TypeScript. Yeah. Okay. So git push. So we better update the yak map, I guess, and kind of yeah. right up where we've got to. And what we think we want to do next. Um, do you want me to share screen or can you find your way to the Miro board? No, I, I'm on my way. Yeah, I'm, on. I'm getting there.
Move around the board as much as possible. Okay, so yeah, over on the Yak map, it's funny, it's kind of fallen off the side of this uh, this frame, isn't it? Let me see if I can drag it over. So I think there's some bits we could make green. Yep. <coughs> Remove users from team. Yeah. Can you do it? Sure. Actually, doesn't that mean the whole octokit? Yeah. Unless there's anything else we want to do. So so there was this idea of maybe we could write contract tests or... Ah, uh, yes. Um, and, the, and the parameterize. Yeah, but I think we could mark that a task as green because I think we're we're done with the, the initial piece of work and there's just a, there's a question about whether we want to... We could maybe just make it dangle off the whole like rule piece of work. Um, so Did we edit the feature files to include the parameterize? In other words, expand the description of the feature? It's a good question. I mean, the thing is the parameterizing is coming through the GitHub action. And I don't know, I don't know how we're going to be able to test that other than actually setting up a GitHub action and running it in GitHub's environment so i'm not sure how easy it's going to be to automate that with cucumber um maybe like passing the if we're going to pass the the duration in we we're going to pass it into the function so we might want an additional given that says you know given the expiry duration is 365 days yeah yeah maybe we will want that yeah. Should we put that on the yak map? Um, yeah, well, so I think let's mark uh, implement uh, OctoKit GitHub client as green because we're done with that. Then if we yeah. step up to here to deploy to GitHub, dot com testing active contributor action org and test it manually in order to do that we need to parameterize the config right right so that is our next step isn't it so we can mark that as orange and then we said we want to be able to configure the org name well we could just hard code it for now the the org name um and the auth token yeah we're definitely going to need to parameterize that um the team names but we've also got the the like inactivity duration i don't know what we call it bex the um interval the, um absence the abs the um uh, yeah maximum absence yeah and the rule in a sense the rule is really users become inactive after an absence or extended absence or something like that. Yeah. 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 So um, there we go. Right. So that's actually the first one I think we want to implement, isn't it? Maximum absence. Yeah. yeah. Um, because we're going to need 
to poke it all the way through to the yeah. oh well so yeah say that's the first one we need to implement but maybe the org name is easier and we could try that one first well it's certainly easier i think the org it doesn't name goes deep no right um because it's in that index ts so it's just there isn't it when we create the optic github client we have to yeah. pass it the org name so what we need is a way to pass these parameters through from from the action and we just need to figure out how we do that we'll find out all sorts of other things you know as soon as we do a manual test we'll find out all kinds of places where we want to have better error handling for situations yeah. like what if the team doesn't exist right give us a nice error and i bet it won't it'll just say not found somewhere yeah so yeah, yeah. there'll be lots of things like that that we'll need to we'll need to round the corners off it once we start to test it manually but i like just discovering those things as we go i don't think it's it's not Fair a bad enough. practice to like just just let it happen uh, so yeah what do you think we should start with should we start with should we say we'll start with org name because that's going to yeah. be more straightforward yeah. yeah and then we can actually deploy it um in fact let me show you how to do that right now are you ready yeah I am, yeah, absolutely. Um, you mean uh, do you drop it into the the GitHub action workflow folder? Yeah. Okay. So, but let's do it in. Um, you know, if can you, can you share your screen? Yeah. Go to the uh, test. Uh, yeah, test contributors page. And go back to the org page. I think it's just that link there, yeah. And repositories. And we can use that dot GitHub um, repo. That would be fine. So we've got a workflow. Oh gosh, it's, it's already there. Right. So it's running on a schedule. Workflow oh, dispatch yeah. can also run it. So what's the steps do? Scroll down. Uses cucumber action retire and active contributors at main. Okay. Well, let's try and run it. Let's do a. Uh, can you look at view runs in the top right there? Look. Actions. Oh, oh, sorry. It was a... There's a button on the yeah. sort of right top right hand side here. Aren't there? But we need to push. It doesn't have the it doesn't have the latest code. So it hasn't run for four months. The schedule workflow is disabled because there hasn't been an activity in this repository for the oh. sixty days. Enable this workflow to resume schedule runs. So yeah, let's click on enabled. because um, that's fine. Um, click on enable workflow. I mean, you probably don't want us running it every five minutes, but. Um, and then can we do run workflow look it's got a it's got a workflow dispatch trigger so do you want to click on the run right. workflow button down there to see it's sort of on in that blue bar on the right yeah there but we haven't pushed any the new stuff oh. well we oh. pushed i see what's going on i would have expected it to run what happened there? I didn't really see what happened. Did you did you get it to run? It said run workflow. Branch main. Yeah, you clicked on that. Is that the right branch? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Twenty four seconds ago. Cool. Okay, it just took a while to update. So click on that one that's failed. And um, we've had an error. What's the error? File not found. Huh. Oh, production. Wait. Yeah. So something's up there with how we're. But we haven't pushed. Oh, have we pushed the newer? Um... Can you break it open to see on line one? It's got a little arrow. Hmm. No, there's nothing there. Huh. Well, okay. Well, that's the th that's the thing to work on next is how we actually get it to run that JavaScript file because we know it's there. 
Home runner work actions. Because if you go to our actual, uh, like copy that that bit there, yeah. If you grab that that bit, cucumber slash action retiring active contributor, and you paste that in in front of github.com in a in a browser. Let's make another tab. And then go to disk production. Oh, it's in source. That's our problem. Do you want to fix it? Oh, yeah. So, so go back to the root. We can just do it in here in the repo. Just do it in GitHub. Go into in the, the click on the okay. like the root folder. And in the action YAML. Should be down there somewhere. Scroll down a bit. Yeah, and then edit that file to be dist slash production slash src slash index.js. Cool. about right yeah 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 and then if we flick back to the other repo where we're testing it oh and run it again we should see something different we just want to run just give it a minute it'll come Sometimes you need to refresh this page. They just have a bit of a, like, you know, it's all happening in background jobs. There's only so many computers available mm -hmm. or so much compute available. There we go. Hey, this is nice. Oh, it's working. Yeah. So it's, it's given up now. And Let's see what it fail this time. Hopefully it's failed saying like that org does not exist or something. Oh, nice. A hard coded org. Oh, cannot find module action GitHub. Hmm. Okay. So we've got more work to do to like make sure everything gets installed. I've not written a JavaScript GitHub action before, so I don't know how we make sure that the dependencies are installed. Interesting. Is okay. it like an import? Is it? Does this have to do with the way we do our imports? I have no idea yet. I don't know. This is this is something to do with it needing to do a kind of equivalent of npm install, or maybe mm -hmm. we need to do That's a it. kind of web packy style thing to like bundle all of the dependencies into our dist folder. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to do some reading about it in between times. But you know what we should do is make a GitHub issue about this. Yes. Should we do that and then we finish? Yes. And I should do the issue in the other. Yeah, not in here because this is just where we're testing it. But who knows? Oh, hey, we just did that one. Oh, we can close this, right? Yeah. OK, uh, let's do a. OK, this is great. So let's let's think about how we do this reporting thing. Yeah. Um, so you know about putting um, back ticks. You do good. You're a good citizen, Blaze. Oh, yeah. This comes from years of having to troubleshoot. So this is other... really important, though, um, to say about like from a you know pedagogy about contributing to open source. Do you want to just fix the preview and show people watching what? what oh, that's right. Has? That's right. Because um, when you are reporting a bug in an open source project, it's really important to be 
thinking about the perspective of the people that are going to be reading it. You just yes. sort of preview tab in your in your text box there. So is there got, a pre uh, preview? So you've got write and preview at the sort of top left hand corner of the text area on the left side. Oh my God! Yes. Okay. Sorry, I've never used that. Got it. Yeah. So you can see that the that stack trace that we pasted in because you put the back ticks around it. It's it's showing it in a monospaced font, and it makes mm -hmm. it obviously much easier for somebody to read than if it was in a um, yeah a regular font. And um, and things like Slack, for example. Um, well, not necessarily, but there are there are packages which will offer you the opportunity to collapse this. For example, because it recognizes that it could be a lengthy code right. yeah. snippet. So, um, so what did you see? So let's go for. Um, so uh, what we see is uh, now. So what when we run? Um, oh, yeah, you could even link to the the build and the other repo. Couldn't you? That's a very good point. Um, All the modules are packages, I guess. Good. So that link takes the, so clicking on that link takes them right to the error message. So this helps people reproduce the problem and reduce ambiguity and certainty. Ooh. Did I just lose my edits? I did, it didn't I? Like it. Ah! <laughs> oh, funny. Okay, so um, all right. So. Uh, I guess I'll just do this again. That's fine. Um, Do we need to put in, uh, let's see, 
Uh, what are we running as? Uh, oh, actually, all we really it's need the to main do branch, is, isn't it? Of our just a, yeah. So it's yeah. basically you don't have to like follow these prompts religiously, right? It just right, right. No. We'll just delete this section blaze it's not it's not for us we're, we're running a note for ourselves here so mm -hmm. don't worry about it um some additional context you could add is mm -hmm. this Send it to you in the Zoom chat later. The commit ID or something? No, I've just been doing a little bit of digging about what might what we might need to do about it. Oh, Zoom, how do I get your chat window? Where are you? Oh. Uh, chat, 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 chat. I'm pressing it. Where is it appearing? There. You may have to exit it's full way, screen. I'll put it way over there on the screen over there. <laughs> okay. There. Okay. Great. Well, this gives us something to work on. And then should we, should we mark the other issue as done? I think so. A nice thing to do can be to paste in the, um, the commit where it was resolved. Um, oh yes. Uh, yeah. That would be, um, uh, do you want to use this last one? Do you think, mm, or well, maybe the, 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 the three, a five, oh, six FE about four down. Oh, okay. Because that's the one where we did it, right? Ah, good point. And everything else is just been sort of refactoring. Yeah, that's true. So what I would do is on that, on that thing at the bottom, if you scroll down on that ticket, at the bottom, you'll see a comment field, so you can say fixed in and then paste in the the shower of the commit and then do close with comment. And then that's nice now because then you've got a little bit of like yep, yep. connection because you can click oh, on that link to yep. how it was fixed if you want to see yep. what code we wrote to fix it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a claim should always include a link to the proof. <laughs> All right. Well, 
Um, should we do a little retro? Yes. By this the was... way, um, on Twitter, uh, Lisa Crispin. Do you know who Lisa Crispin is? The name sounds familiar, but she I can't quite. She wrote the book remember. Agile Testing with uh, oh. Janet Gregory. Oh, she's, she's okay. An amazing hero of mine. Um, she was oh. just expressing how she wishes she she could contribute to open source, but she doesn't know how to get started. <laughs> so I said, "Hey, well, we're doing this thing. You know, you should come along." Um, oh. And I think she's going to maybe join us in five minutes for a chat. So. Oh, that would be fantastic. I just DM'd her the the Zoom link. That's so great. That's exciting. Woo! Starstruck. <laughs> um, yeah, should we, should we switch to Miro and find a place yeah. for our... Let's do that. Um, amazings. I'm going to... How do I ignore your screen share? Can you close the screen share, please? Because it's... So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, should we, uh, so we'll keep the, should, do we want to uh, stop the, the stream when she shows up or does she want to be on? Uh, I don't know. I think we can probably yeah. wing it. Wing it. Um, yeah. I'm scrolling down to the bottom of the retros. I would like to try the 17th of August. Is that really the last time we did a retro? Yeah, that sounds. I wonder if we didn't. Oh, the date. really? I think it maybe is. It might be because I think um, RT and I were to one. Yeah, it could maybe be. Maybe we didn't do one because we met last week, didn't we? But maybe we didn't do a retro. Oh, uh, we might not have. Okay. Forty. Sept. Twenty. Twenty-two. I'm right down the bottom here. And. Um... Yay! Wow. Hello. You're live on the How stream, are... Lisa, just just so you know. So don't say try you you can swear if you want, that's fine. Just don't give away any secrets. <laughs> I don't think I have any secrets. <laughs> so this is Blaze. Hi Blaze. Hi. Um Blaze is in, in Massachusetts. We we get varying numbers oh. for this. We run it like an ensemble um every every week. But uh -huh. we get varying numbers coming along and you're in like a shed yeah i'm in my garage yeah. he's in a he's in a room inside a room yeah. <laughs> nice nice um yeah i'm not too far i'm in vermont so not too far from Boston. oh how cool wow i lived in the bay area for 30 years and i just moved back to the wow. East last year okay so we were in Colorado for 33 years and we moved here four years ago. Wow. Oh, it's lovely to see you. I like your blue hair. Thank you. Thank you. I got to have a blue streak. Um, so how many people do you usually have in this ensemble? Between so two and four, I would say. It kind of got ups and downs every week, but we're kind of <laughs> trying to hold the space basically. Um, I would love to get more people coming, um, but I'm not very good at publicity and stuff, really. So, um, you know, I tweet about it just before we do it, and then yeah, maybe, maybe afterwards. So you do it every Wednesday at um, two at two p.m. East Coast. Write this down so I can put it on my calendar. And what kind of things are you doing while you're ensembling? Well, we have been working on like one particular little project for the Cucumber Org, which is that um, we have a, a permissive commit bit policy, which means if you have a pull request accepted to Cucumber, you automatically get added to the contributors team, which uh, means that you can actually have, you have right access to the main branch of most of the repos in Cucumber. But we realize that that is a little bit of a security hole because we've <laughs> accrued like 350 people in that team, most of whom aren't actively contributing anymore. Um, so what we've been working on as a group is this little GitHub action, which is going to oh. go in to, the or to an org, uh, list all of the members of the org, work out where, how recently they've contributed. And then if they have contributed, if they haven't contributed within some window, it's going to move them into a, another team 
So we're going to create an alumni team in the Cucumber Org, which nice. means people still have the like the badge on their profile, mm-hmm. but they haven't actually got any rights in the org until you know such time as they contribute again, and then we can put them back in the committers team. Gotcha. That's so cool. you know, it's like a, <laughs> um, it's not uh, directly building tooling that people are going to use it's building something to support the open source organization um but it was a, it was a thing that we've i've had on my list for ages to get around to doing and when we kind of discussed as a group like what should we work on we need something real to work on that was what came up so um that's what we've been building for now i kind of have this ambition that we would run this session much more in the in the end as a sort of what have you been working on what should we work on this week like we could just sit whoever turns up you know open space style really um Mm -hmm. whoever turns up whatever they've they've been working on we can just bring it to the group and the group can work on it together and maybe that ends up following a theme for for a few weeks um but but maybe it jumps around depending on who's here so i just what I mean, the, the, you can read the manifesto. So we do a little, um, we iterated towards having a little kind of intro script at the beginning. And mm-hmm. really the point, the purpose of, of this space is to try and shift the fact that, you know, the open source is still predominantly white and male. And mm-hmm. we want to try and create a space where people who don't fit that stereotype can feel safe to like turn up and just learn and learn how to contribute to open source because there's so many things that i've been doing it for years i know about um, and i take for granted that people who are less experienced and less confident don't know about and we just want to create a space where people can come along and learn all of that stuff however whatever shape it needs to take really I like that a lot because I've had people telling me, oh, you know, most open source projects, people just work on their own and it's not very collaborative. That can be true. Um, partic- it, it depends a lot, I think, on um, the community. So for better or for worse, I've, I've had the privilege or the opportunity to work with lots of different programming language communities. And... Um, uh, I'm a big fan of the Python folks and I hang out. That's, that's kind of where I spend, that's my native environment. Oh, okay. In fact, I, I actually supported, uh, I was a release manager for a commercial product that was built in JavaScript. Uh-huh. And it was by, it was at a company that was ridiculously overcapitalized and hired the very best JavaScript developers in the world. And I have a very, uh, poor opinion of JavaScript. Uh, so it's it's kind of um, a testament to Matt's leadership that I have hung in this exercise for so long. Yeah, because this thing we're building is written in TypeScript. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Br- Br- Blaze has to grit his teeth sometimes. But... I do. I but, do. Um, yeah, it was just so fortuitous because I... I struggle when we've got a small group with this. Like, if we've got a bigger group, I can kind of do a bit of like twittering and stuff while we're while we're running it. But if there's only two of us, I'm just focused on what we're doing. But I happened to look at sure. Twitter and I saw what you'd posted, and I was like, "Oh, Lisa needs us, and we need because we could do with you know more people coming, and especially if you can spread the word, you can bring friends as well." Um, because that's the whole thing I'm I'm trying to do here. Like, so I mean, bigger picture, Lisa. I don't know if you followed along with this, but like, I I came back to Cucumber, the open source project, about eighteen months ago when we moved. Oh, to Canada. okay. I'm in I'm in uh, in BC now. I live live in Canada, mm-hmm. and I came back into the open source project, and I looked around, and I saw this problem that like all of the senior people in the Cucumber contributor community were all men, mostly in Europe actually yeah um, and i and i was like right if i'm going to be a leader in this community i want to change that that's what i'm going to try and change and it is so hard because there are so many barriers everywhere um but this is part of what i'm trying to do to fix that is to just create this space where we can i think a lot of it as well is for me is like learning about what is hard for other people so i can think about what i can do as an open source maintainer to to make it 
to, to ease some of those barriers, you know. So well, doing... what's hard for me is I'm not a coder. <laughs> but I don't really want to be a coder. Yeah. Kate, Kate, she's but, not good. I mean, I've been pairing and ensembling for the last 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Without being a coder. So, exactly. uh, but I mean, that's because my, you know, I was working on a team and they were used to me. And so, mm -hmm. like, I just lurk. Well, yeah. my last, you know, I've gone freelance now, but my last full time job, we when I took the job, one of the reasons I took the job was they were doing mob programming and, um, and doing it in a different way than I was used to people doing it, but it was working. And, um, you know, and at first I thought, oh, I'm going to get back into coding. I'm going to relearn Ruby and, 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 and I can, you know, fully participate in this ensemble. And I realized after months of trying to do Ruby koans and tutorials and like, I just don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like coding, but I could still just lurk in the ensembles and you know me i just start asking questions well yeah why are you doing it that way or huh this code here looks just like this other code over here should this be abstracted out into something mm -hmm. um or suggest a test to do because we're doing test driven development and uh and and i would always ask the, the develop you know the developers are working this like am i slowing you down with all these questions or are you happy i'm here because i don't want to be a burden so I think this is a weakness with the way open source t communities tend to work at the moment. That, like, we we do have a predominance for people working asynchronously on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. tooling's all set up for that. So I can sit on my own and craft a pull request and send it in, and then somebody else can sit on their own and read through it and write comments, and we can go back and forth like that. And it is wonderful because like we can be in different time zones, we can be in different parts of the world, and we can still collaborate in this sort of mm -hmm. slow motion way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it means that you're sort of biasing everything towards code, mm -hmm. and um, everything's about the code. Mm -hmm. And I think that means that sometimes you miss bigger picture things, and um, and yeah, and it's a shame to not have some of that like interaction that you get when you when you work together in real time um which like I, the thing i always think about with this what i w want this to be like is that when, when i first was getting into open source and i went to, in fact it's probably the first time i met you actually was at agile 2009 in chicago do you remember going to mm -hmm. the agile functional testing tools open yeah. Space? yeah yeah um and when I came along to that conference, I knew I was going to Chicago. And Dave Chalimsky, who started the Aspect project, oh, lived yeah. in Chicago. I remember him. Yeah. And I planned to go and visit him. And I bought a bottle of whiskey because I knew he liked whiskey. Um, and <laughs> I and I like uh, an Aslak, who's now you know uh, I, I've like started businesses with him and, and been friends with him for years. But I, it was the first time I met Aslak as well. And Aslak and I took a cab to Dave's apartment. And there was another guy there, Corey Haynes. Oh, and, I remember. Uh, Corey, yeah. And Corey Pat Maddox Buzz, turned yeah. up. And so there's like five of us, all white dudes, but sitting around a table with our, with our laptops, like just showing each other what we've been working on and, and then sometimes pairing. And and it was like a really nice environment to, to be doing open sourcing and not lonely and, and really like yeah. friendly and interesting. And I think there should be more spaces like that, basically. Yeah, you know that that I was just reminiscing about the Agile Alliance functional test tool thing last week or week before last because Marcus Gartner was looking for something from there on a pattern he did, and I was just looking through stuff, and what I found was a bunch of videos and pictures I'd taken in twenty the twenty ten one, and it was like, ah, oh, those were such awesome sessions, and it really transformed the test, the automated test framework and driver space. Because <laughs> we started out, you know, Janina Andrea is like, okay, why do the developers have all these IDEs for writing production code? We got nothing for writing test automation code. <laughs> so it really made a huge difference. And it was that collaborative thing. Because I have all these pictures where everybody's crowded together, drawing on a whiteboard or, you know, looking at a computer or whatever. 
Yeah, that's cool. And I, I mean, I know I can contribute in terms of like documentation because that was the one thing I did contribute to Cucumber was some of the BDD doc. Um, and like I volunteered to help with Robot Framer just because I used, used it a long time ago. <laughs> and I know Pekka Clark is the head of it. Uh, and people are really helpful, but like yesterday, I I spent a couple hours, and because I'm such an idiot, like, oh, it's pretty easy to install Robot Framework. I had to install Python. That took a little more thought. And then it's like, okay, well, I use IntelliJ Community Edition, you know, Idea Community Edition. So first I had a really old version of it, and then I realized I needed to install <laughs> I tried updating it. I had to know, just delete it and install a brand new one. And then it's like, okay, there's this robot framework play plugin that they told me to use. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know, and so I'm just by myself feeling stupid and getting more frustrated. And if I could do that together with other people, yeah. it wouldn't take any time. Well, you know, yeah, I, yeah. And you know, the thing I've been learning as as like, you know, I'm in Pekka's role on Cucumber is um one of the other things I've been doing is being really liberal with a with a calendly link whenever anybody shows any interest in becoming a contributor and i've had mm -hmm. tons of these one-to-one -one onboarding sessions with people who want to contribute to cucumber and you know like for example cucumber js you basically couldn't run the developer tests on a windows machine like it just didn't work <laughs> but we'd never discovered that because nobody had told us but mm -hmm. I discovered it by, it's almost like a usability test. You know, I, I would sit with this person and say, okay, can you go to the contributing docs? Right, just, can you just follow along and, and ask me if you get stuck? And I would just mm -hmm. watch them and, and see all the places where we were just making assumptions and uh, and just getting in people's way. So, yeah, I think that kind of thing is really useful oh. to do it live. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. That's so nice. I'm going to make a screenshot of that. Um, oops. I did something weird. Um, you know, after, you know, I asked on the Slack after I was having these problems. And so then later the developer who'd helped me, he gave me kind of walk me through stuff on, you know, for yeah. about an hour on Friday. But he's like, oh, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Because he uses VS Code. And it's like, well, you know, I guess I could install VS Code. And he said, but I don't want to learn a whole new IDE. I'm semi-retired, you know? <laughs> So, uh, oh, that is really nice. So, yeah, and I mean, I, the other way I feel like I could help it, is my frustration over the years and even working for tool vendors. Uh, uh, no, no offense to Smart Bear, because um, <laughs> I didn't work there. Is, you know, this, the, the marketing and the salespeople sell people on these tools, and maybe the tools are fine, but especially the low code or no code ones. You don't need to know anything about programming. Yes, you do, because you're still writing scripts that do things and that when they fail, they have to be debugged and diagnosed. And there are a whole bunch of good practices and patterns you still have to know <laughs> to be successful with your automation. I don't care if it's low code. Uh, and, and I think for all of these frameworks and tools, people need to know good practices. Yeah, and, 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 and why shouldn't we help them with that? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, we're we're almost two hours into this call now. Oh, actually, okay. So well, we I'm sorry. We wind up. No, it's fine. We, so we, what we normally do, we run for ninety minutes on the stream. So okay. From my time. What is it now? It's one o'clock. So eleven a.m. my time, two p.m. yours, I think. Okay. Um, Till half past three your time we usually try and get on the zoom link like 15 minutes early so we've got time to just chat and socialize a bit before we start the stream which is still oh, okay now, my viewers um and we usually try and finish 15 minutes before the end of the stream time before the 90 minutes so we can have time to do a little retrospective we've been get really good in the habit of having like a 15 minute retro at the end of every session oh we've great a lot from doing those um and yeah, I mean, I, I, I say it again, like I'm really open to this thing uh, morphing and changing shape depending on who comes and what they want to get out of it. The, the key thing for me is to create a space 
where people can learn to, to contribute to open source, however that works for them. So please come along, Lisa, if you want to. And bring, I will. I'll join you next weekend. Well. Check it out. Bring your friends. Yeah, I will. Yeah. This is awesome. Um, I can add you to the diary invite if you want. I was thinking sure. there's, there's kind of enough of us on Twitter and maybe I'll make a DM group in Twitter as well where we can kind of remind people that it's happening. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess we're not going to do um, a retro this week though, Blade. We should probably call it a day for today. We were just about to start when when you bumped into you, Lisa. You're, you're muted. Blade. Well, you're, you're very kind to reach out to me. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. And um, I'm actually in between jobs at the moment. So I've got a relatively flexible schedule and I'm on the okay, East, Coast, okay. East Coast time zone. So yeah, whenever. Um, and um, installing Python is the only thing about the language that is really fundamentally frustrating and broken, in my opinion, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. So yeah, there's depending on what you want to do, there, there are about eight different ways of doing it. And only three of them are sensible. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. That sounds good. Yes. This is why I like to collaborate. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if Matt mentioned Kate. Kate is the other regular in the group. And she's a, a, a product manager. She doesn't have any real coding, very little oh, coding okay. experience. Okay. Um, but she, uh, she's really smart. And uh, she helps keep us... Um, going in the right direction sounds great all right well thanks i'll look forward to next wednesday great nice. I'm getting my i'm getting my hair done in the morning so i'll have new new hair <laughs> even brighter blue <laughs> well i do the blue myself so usually when i come back from the hairdresser it's it's subdued but okay look forward still to something new <laughs> <laughs> all right See you all right thanks y'all have bye. a great rest of the day bye bye, bye.